Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the problems with Bitcoin and why it might actually fail. All right, so Bitcoin is currently the largest cryptocurrency with a market cap at around $700 billion, give or take a day. And if you don't know what cryptocurrency is and, or you just don't understand it, I have a video explaining what cryptocurrency is in the description below. So there are a total of 21 million Bitcoin that exists and there are currently about 19 million of those Bitcoin mined. And currently there is about 900 Bitcoin mined every single day. And it's gotten as high as $68,000 per Bitcoin. All right, before we start talking about this, I just wanna throw out a little disclaimer out there that this is not financial advice and that I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this because there's a lot of supporters of cryptocurrency, of Bitcoin especially. I just want to say that there are also a lot of positives to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I myself am invested in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as well. But I think it's worth exploring the negatives to every investment to better understand it and understand the limitations or the struggles that that investment has to overcome. Because really there is no perfect investment so every investment is going to have negatives and Bitcoin is not any different. All right, with that being said, let's dive into it. So Bitcoin has been around for a little, a little while. It was first created in 2009. But let's be honest, have you ever bought anything with Bitcoin? Do you know anyone personally that has bought anything with Bitcoin? Because I haven't, and it's been around a while. And it's currently estimated that 67% of Bitcoin transactions have no economic value. So they're not being used to buy goods or services. It's really not used as an everyday currency. And that brings me to the first problem that I need to mention about Bitcoin. And the, one of the reasons you're not using it for everyday purchases is because of the slow transaction speeds. So transaction fees. The average transaction fee for Bitcoin is roughly 10 minutes. Now you're not going to be going to your grocery store and waiting 10 minutes to buy the food you just spent an hour trying to find in the store. It just adds up, right? So it's really not used as an everyday currency currently because of those transaction speeds. Nobody wants to sit there and wait 10 minutes. And it just, it just doesn't keep up with modern day banking practices of quick transaction speeds. And Bitcoin cannot take large volumes of transactions each day. So theoretically, there can only be 867,000 transactions through Bitcoin per day. So imagine you're the 867,000th and first person. You just, you can't buy your groceries because there's already been too many transactions. So those slow transaction speeds and limited transactions per day make Bitcoin unreliable for day-to-day -day purchases. So the second problem regarding Bitcoin that we need to talk about is the stability, specifically the volatility of Bitcoin. It's just too volatile and that makes it not a great medium of exchange for merchants because there is no protected buying power with Bitcoin. So for example, January 20th, Bitcoin was valued $41,750. Two days later, January 22nd, Bitcoin was worth $36,508. And that's around a $5,000 decrease within two days. So imagine that you're buying a car with Bitcoin, right? Let's say it's a $40,000 car. On January 20th, you could almost use one Bitcoin to buy that car. If you were to wait two days later to make the decision to get that car, you gotta provide an extra $5,000 worth of Bitcoin that you wouldn't have had two days ago. So it's just not reliable. The buying power is not secure. So it, it makes more sense to hold on to it rather than spend it. And not spending money or not spending Bitcoin doesn't provide economic value. And the economy needs spending in order to grow and flourish. So there is no secure exchange rate because it's not backed by anything. The price of Bitcoin is basically determined by scarcity because there is a set or determined amount available. So you might be sitting there thinking like, well, hey, what about gold? Gold's price is essentially determined by scarcity because there's a finite or there's a set amount of gold in the world. But it's a little bit more than that. It's hard to compare gold to Bitcoin for a couple of reasons. Number one, gold is tangible. It's physical. It's an actual tangible asset. And it can be used for certain things like medical devices, jewelry, art, and, and a bunch of other things. 
Bitcoin is just virtual. It's a virtual currency that doesn't actually exist tangibly. And gold has been around for a long time, and so it's more reliable. It's been something that's been proven to have value because it's been around for so long. Bitcoin has been around for a little bit, but not nearly as long as gold. In order for Bitcoin to be an effective currency, it needs some sort of stabilizing force. And the third problem with Bitcoin that I wanna to talk to you about today is the extreme energy usage of Bitcoin. And that's mainly due to crypto mining. There is just so much energy that needs to be used to solve these equations that essentially mine Bitcoin. And that's bad for the planet. We don't wanna be wasteful and use all these non-renewable resources. So if you go to Statista and you look at the lowest energy output that Bitcoin is estimated to generate and the highest output and you take the averages there, you get about 110 terawatt hours of energy usage every single year. That is more energy than the country of Finland uses every year. And they have a population of five and a half million people. And a lot of that energy used to mine Bitcoin is non-renewable. Now it's estimated that around 40% of the energy used to mine Bitcoin is actually renewable. But that still leaves 66 terawatt hours of energy usage per year that is non-renewable. Now to me, that is a lot of energy used just to solve a math problem that we really don't need to be solved. All right, so those are three major issues with Bitcoin that I can see. Now those aren't all the issues, there are a lot of other small issues. And also keep in mind that there are a lot of positives to cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. And Bitcoin still has a lot of potential and that's why I'm invested in it because they can upgrade Bitcoin. They can decrease the transaction times, somehow make it more stable and find renewable ways to mine it. But here's some more bad news for you. Let's say hypothetically they achieve all that. They make transaction times quicker, they make it st more stable and they find renewable ways to mine it. So they're not wasting non-renewable energy. And so all those issues are solved and it starts to become a, a widely adopted and popular currency to use. There's still one issue remains, and that has to do with the government. The government is probably not gonna like that. If they don't have control over the currency, that's probably not gonna make them happy, and they're probably gonna regulate it or ban it or do something to it where they can get a piece of the pie. Or, or maybe they'll just start their own cryptocurrency and use it but then it really wouldn't be decentralized. So isn't that the whole point of cryptocurrency is that it's decentralized? So essentially that just brings us back to square one, right? So keep that in mind. There are a lot of hurdles and humps that cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin needs to overcome in order to be a widely acceptable and usable type of currency or medium of exchange. Right now, it's just not very practical to use. So Bitcoin doesn't have a ton of utility right now. However, with all that being said, that doesn't mean that Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies are gonna be upgraded and overcome all these hurdles. They just have a lot of hurdles to overcome. So I talked a lot about the negatives about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency today, but there are a lot of positives that I haven't even began to mention within this video. However, there still are positives to using cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in the future. There's just not a lot of utility for them right now at this point in time. So remember that I am invested in Bitcoin, but I want to hear your, I want to hear your comments below. Are those three valid reasons why Bitcoin might fail or why it's not working right now? Do you think it'll overcome those humps? Please leave a comment below, subscribe, smash the like button and have a great rest of your day.